three. Okay, this is population part five, population resource and relationships. So we mentioned the way that populations are growing. So how is this going to impact our resources and our relationships with them? Physical causes, then we look at food shortages as sort of like the main example of uh, a resource. But I mean, it could be any resource. But first of all, we're going to focus on food as the main resource. And then we can talk a little bit about different resources. So physical causes, for example, are going to be droughts, lithospheric hazards, for example, volcanoes are going to take uh, the area out of commission for a while, so might interrupt food production. Uh, double warming, we're seeing an increase in uh, poor atmospheric conditions as well, increase in the hazards that we've already mentioned, but just in general, like early temperatures causing uh, plants to start to grow too early in the season because it's warmer than usual. So plants are reacting to it as if it's later in the season and then they might miss their growing season. Human causes, there are quite a few. Uh, growing population means overall there's a higher demand. The demands are changing in a HIC. So they're importing goods from all over the world. They want different sort of uh, types of food and different quantities of it. Uh, and demands are changing very rapidly in middle income countries or newly industrialized countries. So thinking about like uh, Brazil, India, China, South Africa, Mexico, Indonesia, um, to name a few, uh, Turkey, you know, and basically people are getting more wealthier, so they increase the demand from that. Uh, LICs and lower MICs, depending on cash crops, this means that a lot of their agricultural production is to send things away. So cash crops are referencing something like coffee, right? Urban sprawl then means that more land is being taken away that could have been used for agriculture and is used for urban areas or cities. Poor agricultural practices, soil exhaustion is just one impact of it, for example. So if you keep growing the same thing on the same land over and over again, um, and you're not doing anything to keep the soil quality, it's just gonna be draining the same resources or nutrients from the soil. And this will then eventually lose its fertility and ability to grow that cat or to, to grow that crop. Overfishing is a good example. Um, we can deplete fish populations very, very rapidly with overfishing. So if we're catching fish that have not had the chance to reproduce, the population is declining, right? Because we're severely decreasing the birth rate while reducing the population. Um, while fish can actually make a very quick comeback in terms of their population, it has to be controlled. Polluting fertile water and land has caused um, soil degradation and a decrease in the yield, the amount of food that we get out of one area of the land. And then finally, we have waste as well. So we've got huge amounts of waste, which means people are buying food. It's being traded. It's being exported and sent around the world, but it's not been being used on time. Modern examples then of food shortages where we've uh, over exceeded our uh, capacity. We look at Yemen because of the civil war and the impact of outside forces coming in as well and increasing the scale of the war. This has caused a lack of farming, uh, reduced the irrigation methods, has caused a drought and has also increased the mass migration. Syria, again, a civil war with uh, outside countries influencing it, right? So what we call a proxy war. And we had mass migration as well, destruction of farmland, a reduction in the market as well. So people often forget this, that if you have nowhere to transport your food to and you can't make any money off it, it's hard to continue to grow the food for the mass population. So then the food uh, goes down, basically, the food supply. Somalia then prolonged drought. Um, so having long periods of drought uh, has people starving and so often eating seeds for next year. Um, which then obviously will decrease the chances of more food production in the following year. Uh, a lot of the soil gets impacted, dried up and becomes infertile too. And again, we see lots of migration here into neighboring countries because of that. So the impacts that food shortages can have on an area, we see malnutrition, fatigue. These are personal um, impacts that it can have on it. And now we see more deficiency in proteins, which means you're going to have uh, more serious medical conditions, potential for infections, and it's difficult to fight viruses. Um, and then you've got uh, syndromes such as quashior. So this is where we see like the swollen stomach in a lot of people.
So social development means that less people are going to attend school and we see less development socially, uh, life expectancy is a bit lower, um, fertility rates then are changing and you're unable to learn and develop without a healthy diet. The impact on the economy is looking at the ability to... Okay guys, if you like, please subscribe and let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to answer them hope that helped if you want to continue learning the rest of the course is below in our link um, you can sign up and learn there through all these videos there's over 10 hours of videos of the content um, and this teaches you everything about the case studies the concepts in each section and you can just take it at your own pace um, within each course then you'll get a PDF printout some short questions and a video